But yeah, um, there's definitely something changing inside of me, undoubtedly, because I'm doing like very high quality threshold work here. If you, so I'm hitting 2.7 millimole, which is very hard for me to hit usually. I'm hitting it easily, averaging 323 watts, but my heart rate is like, the average on 10 minutes is like 116. So, like, I'm like a solid 10 beats lower now at that output than normal. I don't know what that means. It may mean nothing, but something is changing. two weeks at altitude and uh, one of the things for sure is I think maybe because it's both a combo of being higher and uh, maybe perhaps drier because it's higher you definitely need to stay on top of drinking more so not so much at intensity I'm still on average the temps are pretty low here which is nice I'm, I'm sweating or losing on average in my workouts about 1.3 to 1.5 liters an hour. So that's pretty normal, but throughout the day I'm drinking like an insane amount of fluid every single day. Like I would say I'm drinking like eight to 10 liters of fluid every single day, just to stay even. So that seems to be one fascinating difference. Even back home in Tucson, I don't really find myself having to drink that much to stay even, uh, even when it's hot. And then another piece too is we're at about 7,000 feet here and it would seem to be, there's probably different sweet spots of altitude for different events. Uh, because in my event, like I'm prepping for a 70.3 next, the altitude has reduced my intensity to a point where I can still, like it's hard but like my high end quality is about 70.3 race pace. So if I went up another thousand feet or even 2000 more feet, then I would be below 70.3 race pace, actually probably a bit below. And I think that would probably be a problem then to come down fairly quickly, fairly close to the race and try and race at it because I'd spent no time at race pace going in. Yeah, I'd probably be metabolically, it'd probably be fairly easy to push the intensity, but I would have no muscle fatigue resistance at that intensity. So thus far, this does seem for me to be probably the sweet spot for what my goal is, 7,000 feet or so. A little lower, probably would be leaving some time on the table, some, some adaptation on the table, and a little higher would probably be too much. So perhaps with time that would change. Obviously, if you adapted to 7,000 and you got your you know, LT2 or upper threshold intervals to 340 watts, which is a, a little bit above 70.3 race pace, um, then maybe you could think about going a bit higher. But this is always uh, cost benefit analysis, right? It's like the higher you go, the more taxing it is, the less, the more impaired your recovery is. And so you have to constantly be weighing these, these uh, you know, benefits and costs. So. So far, this seems to be the ideal altitude, at least for me and my goals in racing. Uh, so today I have a two hour bike workout, all threshold, like 70 minutes of threshold. So these ones are actually the most important workouts to be on top of the carb intake because, well, you could, if you didn't take adequate carbs through the workout, you'll burn through basically all of your carbs because it's so carb intensive. And then by the end of the day, you probably won't replace it. 
because you burn through everything and then the next day you're like completely depleted because you didn't you don't won't have the opportunity to replenish and so for this workout I'll do so this is 115 grams of maple syrup which is approximately equivalent to 75 grams of carbs then I have two bottles with scratch formulated with 40 grams of carbs each that gets me to 150 ish grams and then I'll do two Morton gels which gets me a little over 200 grams of carbohydrate and then I'll try and consume about 2.6 liters of fluid in that time as well so I mean that's all easy on paper but when you're you know you're pushing right at the top of the threshold it does become difficult to uh, consume but the beauty of maple syrup is I mean that's very easy from I can literally consume that in probably like two gulps if I wanted to so that's 70 that's like almost an hour's worth of carbs that I can consume in two gulps which has been a huge game changer for me uh, during races to easily achieve 100 to 120 grams of carbs. And now I also add a little bit of sodium citrate. I like citrate because uh, it is on my stomach. It seems to uh, reduce, you know, stomach issues. It's a bit more palatable. And so with this 75 grams of carbs in here, I intend to drink, you know, a solid liter. And so this is like four to one, uh, the weight of sodium citrate. I think it's called like sodium dye citrate. I don't know, something like that, but it's like three to one weight wise. So five grams of this sodium citrate is about 1.25 grams of sodium. And therefore, that at one liter of fluid that's a little over one gram of sodium per liter and that's my intention to drink with this 75 grams of carbs so that's where i came up with the number and then just tiny little bit of water to dilute it for the most part i drink my maple syrup straight pretty big bike workout today yeah we're beginning week three of the camp um this is where we start doing some heavy lifting so very important thus far from my observations to be very conservative pace yourself because pretty easy to cross the line and overdo it or train too hard and you definitely don't want to do that so Today I've got 70 minutes of threshold and I'll start off, they're all 10 minuters. I'll start off around 320 watts. And you get a lactate reading. 320 for reference is what I pushed in Oceanside. So 70.3 race pace, not, not a great uh, bike split, but was close to the even with the front. So that's where we'll start. We'll get a reading and then we'll go carry on from there if we have to adjust up or down. Think of the numbers numbers are a bit higher because last time i did this work out here my breathing was so impaired i did it all in the uprights now i'm adapting so i'm able to go back down in the gt i'm doing 50 percent in the tt but obviously time trialing is a lot harder than riding in the uprights so the lactate now has gone back up at a constant output due to the fact that I've made the the way I'm producing the power harder. So really fascinating stuff, just how predictable your body is. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, we uh, first prefaced it with a nice easy treadmill run, 45 minutes, trying to lessen the taxation as much as I can so really using the treadmill a lot I really can feel the difference through my joints 
And so just trying to really lessen the taxation on the joints, particularly with the running, and then obviously the reduced recovery uh, potential from being at you know, less oxygen in the air. And then we finished the day off with uh, eight times 400. I had done this set in the indoor pool, I think on day, maybe it was day three of coming here. And that's the one where I had the little panic attack. And so this time much better, slowly starting to get the feel for it. Definite improvement, about four seconds per hundred improvement over the last time. So, I mean, you can't really ask for much more than that. Still approximately three seconds per hundred off of what I was doing in Tucson. But now the numbers are actually uh, in the right ballpark anyway. I'm, I'm c consistently in that like mid to millimole range. So like good threshold range. Uh, which for me in the water has literally been a six month journey to get there because uh, had I done this set literally even four months ago, uh, I would have struggled to do it and have my lactate under four millimoles. So I think, it's, I think it's a good sign that we're moving in the right direction, at least in terms of how we're producing the energy we're using while swimming. So that's it, Not, nothing too crazy, that's, that's two weeks done. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. I, I really don't see a time now after experiencing this. Of course, we have to wait until, uh, you know, race results and, and feeling going, going down. Uh, but so far, I, I think it's gonna be difficult to not want to incorporate altitude training into my regimen consistently.